right, welcome back. Episode 140 of Chaotically Intolerant. Um, Curtis from the Curtis Podcast Network is back. Uh, if you haven't read our Chaotically Intolerant end of season NFL awards, head over to Chaotically Intolerant right now. Um, warning, I gave Dak Prescott my MVP. I did. <laughs> it, it, you know, yeah, I, so I've right. been against Dak for so long, but I'm just I'm looking at the numbers and it's a quarterback league. I had to give it to him. Yeah. Yeah. And instead, we just keep giving Lamar hardware. <laughs> Exactly. Um, but I'm not sure why we're even talking about this because according to my notes, let me just, let me just throw the glasses on for a second. According to my notes here, the, mm, those are, those are the six. NFL is rigged because, hold on, just trying, I'm trying to read through all these notes. Joe Biden has employed Taylor Swift and Roger Goodell together mm. to rig the NFL so more people... We'll get the vaccine. But apparently this has been going on for a long time because the NFL chose to put a quarterback who grew up in San Francisco, went to Michigan to put him in New England, of all places. And then another quarterback who went, who lived in Texas, went to Texas Tech, put him in a small market like Kansas City. And then also did not give Dak Prescott the MVP this year in their most profitable franchise. Those that that is what I have I have come to, because why are we yeah. even talking about it? The uh, NFL's rigged; it doesn't matter. Nothing, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look, you have a point, but I'm pretty sure you know there there was that theory that Taylor Swift is a psyop. Yeah, I, I don't subscribe to that in the sense of uh, she's been a psyop the whole time. <laughs> like came out of came out the womb a psyop. It's not like a new thing. They probably just gave her like an upgrade or something. They, they like, bred her. Upgrade, they bred her for uh, the government. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> she they knew. Crazy. They knew that white women would love her music in in 2010. They were like, "Listen, white women are gonna love this shit." <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh yeah, they're gonna relate because you know she's almost as flat. Uh, well, Kate Hudson probably. You yeah, know that is. Sounds about right. Okay. Old. <laughs> anybody out there? Right. Um. <laughs> anyways, uh, so we're we're doing a little kind of like very casual look back on the NFL season. Um. So we're actually going through our midseason awards right now. So at the middle of the year, because I I think this was a cool little way to call back and think about that time. Middle of the year, I had Lamar of all people as my MVP. Yeah. Michael Seth had Tua as the MVP, and you had C.J. Stroud as the MVP, which obviously C.J. ended up winning yeah. the uh, Offensive Rookie of the Year. Lamar won um, MVP, and Tua won a ring pop. Nothing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a seat on the bench and, uh, uh, and a couch for the season, yeah. The, the most hilarious one to me uh... is Comeback Player of the Year because obviously the winner – did not even he didn't even he wasn't even on our minds when we put this thing together. <laughs> no, I had Tua. Michael had Lamar actually, mm. um, and you had Froster mm. Moreau. Yeah, uh, he was another one of the people that you know he's playing when he shouldn't have been. He's he's coming back from cancer. It's a story. It's a, it's story a great story. Up. No, yeah. it's it was a great story. Um, most explosive, and unlike Demar, no, go ahead. He played. Oh, uh, unlike Demar, he actually played. If if Demar so. now I know they don't do the votes like during the playoffs, but if Demar gets mm -hmm. the fake punt, like if if he if he gets the first down on the fake punt, I feel like they might like Roger Goodell might come in and be like, no, we, no, no, he I rule all. It's it's Demar Hamlin as <laughs> the comeback player of the year. Just imagine him walking, just stuffing a bunch of. Demar. <laughs> he's like, oh, he's like cleaning himself off. There's just like Demar everywhere. It's like, and and you know, as, as commissioner of the league, I felt like it was necessary, you know, to. Sorry, I got all this paper all over no. me. My bad. And it felt like it was necessary to put uh, Demar <laughs> Hamlin. In. Most explosive. Tyreek Hill won it in a landslide. Now Tyreek was like, I mean, not nowhere to be found in the second half of the season, but 
Definitely not the most explosive player in the second half. Pretty easy. Yeah. Um, best yeah. best coach. I stuck with D'Amico Ryans. I, I awarded D'Amico the uh, coach of the year at mid-year and this part of the year, and he should have won. I don't know how he doesn't. Yeah. I don't know. I, I understand what Stefanski went through, but come on, man. Like, the that Texans team won three games last year, and then they won their division the very next year. How are we not giving it to D'Amico? Yeah. And they beat Stefanski in the playoffs mm-hmm. handedly. Like, they didn't even beat him. They kicked the absolute shit out of him. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was a couple bumps and bruises away from being a literal mugging. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you had Mike Tomlin, which, again, not. A, I don't think that's a bad pick either. Um, I think the Mike Tomlin hatred is kind of unnecessary, in my opinion. Um, and, and I don't sure. like to go to this. But I have talked to some Pittsburgh fans, and the things I have heard them say about Mike Tomlin because of his race is crazy, and they they directly relate it right back to race. So I'm not like assuming anything. This is what I've heard from Steeler fans. It's crazy. This is absolutely insane that the guy has winning seasons every year. They went to the playoffs again, and and he's getting all this hate. This is I have never seen it from any other franchise except for this. Yeah. I mean, the race has nothing to do with it. He's a great coach. He just he just is. Any other franchise, yeah. maybe, yeah. I think, I mean, the Patriots right now should probably take him. Um, the Chiefs wouldn't take him because why would you? Maybe the Rams with McVay feel like they wouldn't get rid of McVay and Shanahan. Like those, there's like three coaches in the league that you would say, no Mike Tomlin, I feel like. every Everyone else is like, yeah, we'll take him. We'll, we'll take a winning record in a playoff appearance every year. You're damn skippy. Pretty sure the Saints would kill that at this point. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, biggest surprise team. The Houston Texans, I said. Um, you said the Detroit Lions. And Michael actually said the Seattle Seahawks, although we know what happened at the end with the Seahawks. But, I mean, they were good. <laughs> they, were, yeah. they were pretty good. Um, For a time. And then we, I think we both went more negative in this uh, surprise in the second half. I went with the Eagles because I was like, who would have thought? And you went with the Chargers, which again, who would have thought that team would be so horrendously bad? Like Brandon Staley's a bad coach, but Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, and then Michael went with the Browns, who, you know, they did it. They did it with smoke and mirrors, like he said, but, you know. Great defense. Biggest surprise player. I didn't want to leave Flacco out because I didn't give him the comeback player of the year. But I was like, I can't leave Joe Flacco out of this. You can't, right? Yeah. Um, so I gave him. Yeah, I mean, he definitely deserved it. Ab- Go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you gave Devin Singletary, who was a great, great back. I mean, he basically came in and, and did what, um, what the hell is his name? Damian Pierce did? Yeah, yeah, what Damian Pierce did last year. And he just came in and did that. And then Kyron Williams for Michael. Um, yeah. Kyron, great, you know, yeah. great Solid ball choice. Solid choice. <laughs> uh, at the yeah. halfway part, I gave it to Kirk Cousins because, I mean, that they, they just, like, came out of the get. Like, they were 0-3, and, and then they went 3-1, and one, and then obviously tears his Achilles. Uh, Michael said Puka Nakua, yeah. which I feel like we kind of forgot about. Yeah. Yeah, and then you said because it's such a quarterback-driven lead, it was yeah. You Go said ahead. Josh Dobbs. Remember Josh Dobbs? Remember that the pastor not the pastor not. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's a Tennessee boy. I'll never forget him. <laughs> that just feels it feels like a year ago that that was like his. He was like arguably top ten quarterback. Like people were trying to make that argument for him. I was like, no, I mean it's a cool story, but no. <laughs> yeah. Oh God! What a story yeah, that guy. Good has. for him, though. He can go he can go work for NASA. Um, <laughs> yeah. Most disappointing team. New England. I said the New England Patriots at the half. Uh, Michael said the Giants, and you also said the Patriots, um, which are all pretty valid, I would say. Um, I at the end of the year, I said the Jags because hilarious, man. That was that was hilarious. The wheels fell off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the literally. 
at the end of the season, the Jaguars were like, everybody was sitting on one plank. All the wheels and the rest of every part of the cart fell off, and they were just like holding on for dear life. I'm, I'm crazy, or I thought I was crazy, but I was watching the Jags Titans game at the end of the year. And why the, the last two plays of your season to save your season, to win the division, you run the exact same play twice, some like back shoulder five yard fade. Like it made no sense to me. Like that is not a successful play design. How in God's name do you run yeah. that twice in a row? I don't know. I think that's a, re- a big reason Press Taylor is so hated in Jacksonville. Which is funny because one of your co-hosts, Isaiah, wrote an article for us, his first article, about how Press Taylor shouldn't be fired. Um, I think it was right after the Monday yeah. night game when they lost to Cincinnati, to the Joe burrow Cincinnati Bengals. Hilarious. I, I, well, that wasn't Joe Burrow. That was yeah. Jake Browning. Yeah. Hor- yes. Horrible. Hilarious. Uh, you said the Eagles, which, again, they were in my most surprising team. So, um, I mean, how do you how do you start 10-1 and one and finish 11-6? and six? Getting put out of the playoffs by yeah. Tampa Bay. What, what, what are, are we, we doing? That's not Tom yeah. Brady over there. <laughs> they, thought, they thought Baker was Tom Brady. They really did. Yeah. They were like 12, cut in half is 6. That's the same person. <laughs> Holy crap. There's just two of them now. <laughs> two two Baker Mayfields. Yeah. Holy shit. Where's the other one? <laughs> Which one are we supposed to hit? <laughs> and then they were Exactly. Then they were and then they were done. Um, and then they were done. And then Michael also stuck with the Giants, which I mean, how can you not? That that was probably yeah. they signed Daniel Jones that massive contract. I saw somebody saying the Browns should trade Deshaun to the Giants for Daniel Jones. Which I was like, I mean you're I wonder what the math is on that. Are they saving money for that? Um, Because it just has to be a financial decision. I mean, that can't be for skill. Yeah. Yeah, no. Because you're you're not trading for Daniel Jones for skill. You're trading for Daniel Jones to save $20 million. Absolutely. Uh, Most disappointing player. I love, you know, Aaron Rodgers has just been insufferable since he got hurt. Just... The con, it's it's all yeah. him. It's all about him. That's all it's been when he's hurt. Like, just, I would shut up. So I gave him most disappointing. I said, leaves Green Bay. Media talks about the Jets winning the preseason Super Bowl. Signs all his old friends. Get hurt. Gets hurt four drives into the game. Spends the rest of the season talking about how he can return soon. Talks about how great his surgery was. Doesn't return. And then at the end of the year, he went on the Pat McAfee show and said that he can't, he still can't run at full speed yet. So. Hmm. Which I understand a quarterback quarterback yeah. doesn't always need to run at full speed. But yeah, Aaron Rodgers is definitely one of those guys that uh sits in front of the mirror and is just talking to himself for a long time. Like, come on, Aaron, we get this going. So it's like affirmations that he's just putting out in the world. Like, oh, I'm coming back. You know, uh, it feels good, it's good surgery, it was experimental or whatever, but you know, it's good. It's good, it's all good. I'm good, you're good, they're good, we're good. And and I know he's like a political Everybody. whatever shit. I don't I don't care about that shit. The fact that he spent yeah. an entire season when his team was trying to pick up the pieces after his injury, which an injury injury happens. Their offensive line was horrible. I don't blame him for the injury, but the amount of just bullshit that he caused in the media. I mean, can you imagine being Zach Wilson in that moment like <laughs> that he is he is trying you are playing so bad that Aaron Rodgers is trying to come back early from an Achilles surgery. Like that's how bad you are. Yeah. Yeah. Uh I don't <laughs> I don't see a scenario where Zach Wilson ends up starting anywhere ever again. And I like, oh crap, we're down to our third string guy and that happens that's it. He's an emergency quarterback. And um, I could see him winning a random I mean, game just for the Titans at some point. Or like that. the Cardinals. He comes in in like five years and everyone's like, hey, remember Zach Wilson? He's starting today for the Cardinals because yeah. they're down to their third string guy. Yeah. Yeah. Kyler Murray's hurt again. <laughs> Let's bring in the guy that had a really cool throw at the con- at his pro day. <laughs> and his mom's still super oh. hot. Well, let me. <laughs> one, one day I, I sat down and I was like, you know, I really want to like, know like what's going on with the mom. So I just searched up Zach Wilson's mom and I was like, it, it didn't disappoint. Yeah, Can't no. blame me. 
If you haven't yet, yeah. go ahead. Go ahead. Absolutely. Go ahead. Um, you said AJ Brown, which I agree with as well. Just the constant complaining. I mean, dude, you sit down. Dude. And it's the same thing with Stefan Diggs. Dude. It's the they're they're kind of the same character to yeah. me at this point. Yeah. To me, there's there's nothing more annoying in this world than somebody who complains to death about I'm not getting opportunities here. I'm not getting the money I want. Goes and gets the money. Goes and gets to a place where the opportunities are there. Goes there. Has a slightly, not even a bad season, a slightly worse season than the year before. And he's mm-hmm. bitching. Hardcore. Dude, I don't give a shit what you think you are. Just humble yourself. You're playing a child's game. You're getting paid millions of dollars to play a child. Yeah game a violent child's game but a child's game nonetheless i uh you know what's funny i was actually looking at our i think our most mvp no where was it i think maybe our most explosive um and we were seriously discussing a aj brown tyreek hill race to 2000 like at at the middle of the year yeah that was a realistic possibility that was going to happen and then all of a sudden it just falls apart both teams really just could not get anything going towards the end of the year um also i hope aj brown comes to the colts shane steichen baby he's gonna bring him here (laughs) (laughs) jason it's definitely every single podcast episode we've done for like the last three weeks i brought that up i've like somehow brought that into the fold where i'm like aj brown coming jason kelsey assistant offensive line coach because we just hired like arguably the greatest offensive line coach of all time um who else legerius sneed's coming to help the secondary and uh i can't remember there's somebody else that i i love to just implant in everyone's mind it's the most delusional thing i've ever said but <laughs> it's all it's only delusional because the general manager does not like spending money i think every off season the Colts have gone into like the last five years. I see graphics from all these Colts pages. The Colts have third most cap space in, you know, in the league this year. We're going to go out and get some guys. And just like, same thing. Like, this is, Nothing. guys, it's not going to happen. It's just, <laughs> it's not what we do. <laughs> no, I mean, it's fun to dream about, but like, for whatever reason, they're like, hey, we're just going to, we're just going to hold on to this money and let it roll over to next season. We'll pick up some backups, yeah. some rotational guys. But good locker room guys. Real good locker room guys. Great character yeah. guys. That's that's <laughs> yeah. what he says. Character guys. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God, we got some good character guys. <laughs> uh, they're going to be good for us. Too. Um, Michael. Uh, Michael said Miles Sanders, the most disappointing player. Which, who I haven't heard his name yeah. since last season. Yeah, I mean he played sparingly. I think he got hurt a couple different yeah. times. And then Chuba Hubbard came in and just made him completely yeah, irrelevant. Absolutely. So. Um, at midseason, we said I said Bryce Young, Michael said Jimmy G, and you said Devonte Adams. Which, I mean, Adams had I think he had a bit of a better end of the year, right? Like obviously this wasn't a Devonte Adams season, but he didn't have a, even probably like a serviceable. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. Uh, I mean Towards the end of the year, I think the Raiders went on something of a, a good winning streak. Moral, um, moral yeah, winning the, streak. The we call the them, we, that's what we call them. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they. I think they lost a game by like, I don't know, like 27, 30 points, something like that. Didn't score at all. And then the next game put up like 60. That was, charges. no, no, they did the, they lost three to nothing to the Vikings oh. at home in a dome. Go. <laughs> on real grass, not not fake grass, real grass. Every possible hmm. positive thing for them, they couldn't get. They couldn't score a point. And then they put the 63 up. They That's the kicked Staley point. out the door, which everybody and their mother wanted Staley out the door. Not a shock. But, yeah, the Raiders are hilarious. Yeah. They're they're a hilarious organization, especially Mark mm-hmm. Davis. Yeah. Yeah. And that uh, they they gave the Colts a good scare for no yeah, reason. That I I remember like sitting there. I was like, we don't deserve this because we can't like put the fucking hammer <laughs> down on the on the Raiders. Come on, guys! Like Aiden O'Connell was tearing yeah. apart our secondary for about half that game. Um, yeah. LVP at the halfway point. I said Ryan Tannehill. Michael said Desmond Ritter. 
and you said the entire Tennessee Titans offensive line minus Peter Skaronski. I said <laughs> the end of the year. Oh, I forgot to I forgot to bold your thing. You said the Titans O line, so you kept it. Uh, Michael also kept with Desmond Ritter, and I said the entire Carolina Panthers offense minus Bryce Young and Adam Thielen, who had a thousand reception yards this year. So clap it up for Adam Thielen. He's like thirty three years old. He's ancient. Well, ancient in football terms. Yeah. Very, very quiet. Clap it up. Soft, soft, golf soft clap. golf clap. Yep. In honor, in honor of the waste management last weekend, that had to get shut down, or the the beer sales got shut down because of because <laughs> of all the drunk people. Golf club. <laughs> um, I, about Spieth. Yeah. Do you, do you follow golf at yeah. all? Spieth, for those who don't know, got kicked off one of the most re- the Genesis on Friday Invitational yeah. or something. Yeah, uh, because he uh, had an incorrect scorecard. Apparently, like, you're supposed to drop your card off before you go do anything else. Yeah. And he had a bathroom emergency, went to the bathroom, and then dropped the card off. My question is this. Don't they keep track of that, like, other ways? So I'm, like, well, you turn in I, don't, I don't know if I told you my, my golf history. I tried to play professional golf for a while. I'm recently, very recently, oh, like, shit. semi-retired. Um, so the ins and outs behind that is the basic rule is, and everyone knows this, uh, and it's, it's one of those golf rules. That's like, it's kind of dumb, but it, it's necessary. You have to go straight to the scorer's table. As soon as you go straight to the scorer's table and you leave, that score is your score. No matter what, that is your score. If you don't sign it or if it's incorrect, then you can be DQ'd. Spieth knows this. He knows this more than anybody. He's been involved. He had to take a shit. Like, he just had to take a shit. Yeah. And it's one of those rules, again, like the the golf rules. Like, I I have my own issues with a lot of golf rules. Like, the PGA Tour requiring pants is crazy to me. Just, especially when they come and play at the Valspar in, like, March. They come and play here in March, and it's still fucking hot. Like, and then they play tournaments in, um, yeah. they play at TPC Sawgrass in Florida and like, Shoot, I can't remember the exact days, but it's Florida is fucking hot most of the year. So like you could pretty much say yeah, pants aren't an option for most people. Um, but it's one of those rules where it's stupid, but that is specifically the rule. He should not have left no matter what. He should have signed the correct scorecard. He should have reviewed everything. But when you got a shit, <laughs> sometimes you just got a shit. But they they do need to change. I feel change. like they exception. To- they, they have yeah. to change it because you gotta change it. they have the live scoring. And I've done the live scoring before where after each hole, because they ask you, hey, we want to make sure just we can match everything up correctly. And obviously, if there's a group dis, a, a group dispute, the, the live score isn't final, right? But they like to have the live score yeah. because of X, Y, Z. But usually in like smaller tours, the players keep the live score. They don't have people to keep it like the PGA tour does, but that's the rule. And another, like there's just a lot of really stupid golf rules. Like if you hit your ball, you know how like you take divots, right? With a golf club, you hit, hit with an iron and you take the chunk out. Well, if a person doesn't fill that divot with sand, because you, you have sand on your golf cart and etiquette wise, and just for golf course care, you're supposed to fill your divot with sand. That's just, it, it, that's that's just what it is. You're supposed to help take care of the course. If that divot is not filled with sand and your ball rolls into the divot, you cannot move it. You cannot take any sort of free relief. But if there is sand in the divot and your ball rolls in there, you can take, I want to say, like one club length away. You can <laughs> drop it from your knee height. Very dumb. It's just like so many little ticky-tacky like, if, if it was as big as the NFL, people would be losing their minds over these, like, really stupid ticky-tacky rules. Yeah. That makes we sense. would be getting a lot of golf is rigged. <laughs> we would be getting a lot of that. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess on, on, the, on the NFL is rigged topic, real quick, why would the – I understand you want, like, the most popular sport in America, but wouldn't you want to rig the NBA who's super involved, like, super big in China – wouldn't you want to try and rig it for some sort of American political stuff? American like, you would want to go over there, right? They're massive over in China. Or Major League Baseball, who's big in South yeah. America. 
and over yeah. in you know certain European countries, like football, the yeah. one that that nobody else watches but us. Crazy to me. It's just. I'm not. I'm not going to say anything else. Yeah, I, it doesn't. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me either. I, I just think people don't want certain teams to win, and when they win, it equals it equals rigged. And yeah. um, I was the only one on my show that predicted that uh, the Chiefs would end up winning the Super Bowl. Everybody else was all 49ers, and if the 49ers don't win, the NFL is rigged. So, great minds yeah. think alike, brother. <laughs> yeah. I, I I was like sitting here. The sun, it was the Saturday before the Super Bowl, but it was the Monday episode that dropped after the Super Bowl. And I was telling Leighton, our guy, I was like, listen, I'm telling you right now, the Chiefs will win. And I don't want them to, but I'm putting all my bets on them. I, I put about 10 bets in. Nine of them were on the Chiefs. The other one was on Debo Samuel to win Super Bowl MVP, just in case the 49ers won. But I was like, I am so sure because yeah. – this is the Tom Brady effect again. This is what we're doing. This is what we did with Brady. I'm not falling for it this time. And I'm going to appreciate watching greatness because I didn't appreciate it when Brady was doing it. I was always like, fuck, man, I don't want Brady to win, blah, blah, blah. I'm a pre we don't get to see this all the time. This is just a fluke that Brady and Mahomes have come right after each other. This is like, it's not awesome yeah. because I'm not a fan of them, but it's very cool to watch. <laughs> yeah. It is. It is dope as yeah. hell. As a football fan, we should be great. Absolutely. You can you can be a fan of your team and also appreciate the game. Like that's that's why I watch non Colts yeah. games because I appreciate the game. I love the game. So, but it's a, it's a generation of sore losers, is what it is. If you're saying it's rigged, you're just a sore loser. <laughs> yeah. What yeah. Chiefs fans say for real? <laughs> yeah, for real. Well, they don't even care. They're like. <laughs> We They're still the have the rings. Been... Like what? If it's rigged, whatever. I don't care. Uh, I'll take yeah. a rigged ring. <laughs> yeah. I would kill for a rigged ring. You would kill for a rigged ring. Oh, damn, Skippy. Yeah. Those things are expensive <laughs> and huge. Absolutely. The Rams one is sick. They're ungodly huge. Uh, is that the one with the stadium on it? Yeah. Yeah. Dude. It, That's insane. It's literally a replica of SoFi. <laughs> like, and then when you take the ring off, you see the inside, but then they never show you the bottom of like the top part that you take off. It has the actual Jumbotron on it. And then surrounding the Jumbotron is a little piece of one of the footballs that was they played the game with. Damn. That thing is literally sports the details. right there. The on your uh, on your yeah. ring finger. Just it's just sitting there too. I just can't I can't wrap my head around somebody putting Fifty thousand dollars or sixty hundred, whatever, on their finger, just sitting there with their f fucking finger holding that. I'm like, I would be afraid to take that thing out of the house. <laughs> I don't think anybody wears them. Um, yeah, like you only see them. You really only see them. Old guys will wear them if they want them. Like forty years ago, they'll wear them to like NFL events, and like that's it. You really yeah. don't see them wear them that much. Even like the backups, yeah. they won't. They really won't wear them. Like you'll see a guy who's like, "Yeah, I played on like the '70s Raiders." You know, I was like a backup tight end, and they're not wearing it around. They just, yeah, yeah it's crazy. Um, I, I, I mostly see people wear, use them as necklaces. Yeah, I like that. I really like that. That's a cool little like a little chain thing. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, yeah. Bonehead coach of the year. Uh, you hmm. said Dan Campbell, which I'm sure would get people in a in a in a scuff, stirry, whatever, whatever word it is, flurry. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. We both said Brandon Staley, me and Mike, just because I I hate his attitude. He has one of the worst attitudes <laughs> I have ever seen from a head coach. Just no accountability for his defense being dog shit, and especially anyone who's listening. Go watch his press conference after the Packers game. They gave up 100-something on the ground, 300-something in the air, and he goes, our defense did their job. I don't know what you're talking about. That's like uh, the Zach uh, post-game press conference where he's like, I didn't let the defense Absolutely. Down. <laughs> it's like you, you move the ball in. It's inch, crazy. Literally. It, absolutely insane. And Dan Campbell, I can actually agree with that one. <laughs> as much as I love the Dan Campbell way, 
I love Dan Campbell. He is hilarious. He is awesome. Um, yep. But just come on, man. Like, and and the other thing, people will say, "Oh, well, they didn't trust their kicker." And I'm like, "Why did you go into the playoffs with a kicker you didn't trust? If you didn't trust the guy, yeah. you can go out and sign someone else." Kickers are kickers are so like you know you can hit on if you catch one just at the right time, like just have an open workout. Yeah, I don't, I don't get it. Don't get it at all. I don't know what was going on in his head, but points on the field yeah. and it they should not have lost that game. Yeah, but they did. At the halfway Stupid. point, bonehead. I said Sean Payton. Um, I still hate Sean Payton because of uh, Bounty Gate. That might be one of the worst because I know the Bra- you know Brady and Belichick had Spy Gate. They had Deflate Gate. First off, as a Colts fan, Deflate Gate was a sham bullshit thing. Come on, <laughs> that was crazy. Like we all know because yeah. of the weather, everyone knew, and we were still going like, oh yeah, Brady definitely had this elaborate plan, though. guaranteed. <laughs> be insane. Yeah. Now, as a oh god, how old was I in 2014? I was 12. As a 12 year old, I hated Brady, and I said the Flake Gate was he should be suspended. I said, "Oh well, are the Colts going to be sent to the Super Bowl instead?" <laughs> as a 12 year old, I said that. <laughs> That's because I was stupid. Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. you're 12. The, you know. the, if you're 12, you're stupid. You're just you're dumb. You do say and do dumb things. It, it's not your no. fault. It's not your fault. You, you could even be a smart 12-year-old yeah. and still be a stupid 12-year-old. Yeah. Um, Michael said Josh McDaniels. Remember him? <laughs> I do. What an idiot. <laughs> God bless. What an and idiot. you said Matt Eberflus. How many chances does that guy need? Bears yeah. coach. I feel, did he, like, save himself? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. The Montez sweat trade and playing subpar teams down the stretch because the Bears were god-awful the year before, so their schedule was a cupcake. Um, I mean, with that and Justin Fields playing serviceably at time, they almost squeaked into the... Yeah. If they had won... They beat Detroit at some and... There was a game that they were really close to beating another division opponent. If they win that game and win the last game of the year against the Packers, I think it was, then uh, they're in the playoffs. Yeah. they. I remember, like, going into week 18, and they had, like, a – maybe 17. They There was one week they had, like, this, like, weird but somehow kind of possible, like, we have to win out. And then these teams that are, like, underdogs have to lose to their to the favorites and – it was like it was a lot of legs. It was like a big leg parlay, but like all the bets you make are like pretty much given. So it was like, okay, there's maybe a yeah. shot here, but obviously we know what happened. But <laughs> I just, I love I yeah. love those. I Fair love when people put those out. It's hilarious. Heartbreaking <laughs> loss of the year. So at the midway, um, I said Jets Bills week one overtime. Aaron Rodgers. Actually, I think I said it for Buffalo because Buffalo was like at that point in the year they were kind of felt like they were dead. Um, so I think that was the yeah. Bills' heartbreaking loss. Michael said Aaron Rodgers, which obviously, and then you said the Texans' interior offensive line, yeah, which I don't know how much got fixed yeah. towards the end. Uh, got fixed a little bit. I mean, towards the end we were able to get the same three interior guys playing every yeah. week, which was nice instead of a constant. Rotating door of left guard, center. And, I mean, Shaq Mason played all yeah. games, but nothing else there. Just, ugh. I mean, we traded for Kendrick Green from Steelers, who they were going to use fullback because he wasn't very center or guard. <laughs> yeah. He played like three weeks for us, then tore his shoulder up, gone for the year. I was like, God damn, can we, can we get a guy who's break? Please, please, just one. That's all I need. Just need somebody to fill a hole. <laughs> any hole. <laughs> Literally anything. No. Just fill one, please. <laughs> yeah. Um, heartbreaking loss of the year for us, obviously for me, it was Texans, Colts, week 18. I, I, did, I said I was going homer. Um, just 
Yeah. I've said it, I've said it a million times, but I did not understand what Shane Steichen was doing at the end of that game with not, not with that play with um, Trey Sermon, not even that I'm talking about, you had the ball with six minutes. Like you want to give yourself as many opportunities to win the football game. If you're putting all your eggs in one basket on running the clock down to six minutes and saying we're losing, but we're gonna we're definitely gonna score a touchdown here. Like, go down, score as quickly as you possibly can because the hurry up almost always works in the NFL for some reason. <laughs> and yeah. then give yourself as many opportunities. Like even if you kick a field goal, you're down two, two, three, three. You're down three. Yeah. Like it just it made no sense. And then the. The I was like, well, why is Trey Sermon out on the field? And people were like, oh, well, they didn't want – they said, oh, well, Trey Sermon was running with the offense for that play. I was like, if that's the play you're going to use on fourth and one, why are you running with Trey Sermon? You're a third string back. Why are you not running it with JT? And then they say, oh, well, we didn't want JT yeah. to be keyed in on. Do, do the Dolphins take Tyreek out of the game? Do the Chiefs pull Patrick Mahomes? Because they're like, we don't want, we don't want the defense to key, on, key in on Patrick Mahomes. Do I mean you could yeah. do that logic with literally any team, and then also, um, I think what was the other one? I had another one. Uh, oh, and I mean like Minshew, that was the easiest pass of his life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Minshew puts that ball a little bit more ahead of him, um, I, and I believe it was Goodson, not Sir. Oh, maybe it was Goodson. I, I got to change that then. Shit. Yeah. Whoops. Goodson, um, you're right. It was Goodson. Because yeah. Trey Sermon was on my <laughs> mind because I saw something else. I, I think I was looking up stats and I like saw something about Trey Sermon. And then it just stuck in my head. Yeah. He had a pretty solid year as a third string guy. But um, yeah, no. Nah, and Gardner puts that ball in a little bit better of a spot. I believe even, even Goodson would have caught it. Yeah. And the play was, but he would have got the first down. You know, like you grumble some. That's Gardner being Gardner. Well, and you. I think He's I think something him. needs to be said about, and this is like a key to the Houston Texans. This is a attaboy. The pass rush in that play, like if if I don't remember who it was, but whoever your defensive lineman was on the left side, if he doesn't make a play like that because he got his hand up, that forced Gardner to try and throw it away from his hand. Like obviously, if he doesn't yeah. bull rush there to try and get in, you know, get to Gardner instead of playing it safe, like most coaches would do, just play it safe, drop a few more back. Like, that, that's a great football play. That that was, I think that was the reason he made that bad pass because he was afraid it was going to get batted down because half of Gardner Minshew's passes get fucking batted down. <laughs> that, was, that was the theme all year. It was crazy. Yeah. Yeah, Although no hate to Gardner, I really hope he gets start. I hope he gets a job somewhere, like because he's going to be a free agent, and I feel like we're not going to resign him, which would suck. I feel like he's the he's I, he's I earned like, a Brian yeah. Hoyer. He's he's earned the Brian Hoyer kind of like thing where he yeah. he can go anywhere and back up. He'll go anywhere. <laughs> um, no, you said the NFC title game. Until Oh, sorry. You're right. I'm just, I'm interrupting just, you so much because it's kind of delayed for some reason. Oh, okay. I'm not sure why. I thought that's what it was. Yeah. All right. So you said NFC Championship game. Mm-hmm. You just watch the game and you'll understand. Um, yeah. There wasn't a single person outside of maybe a handful of counties, warn you, that was not rooting for history. We wanted to see the Lions make that jump to the next level. We wanted Jared Goff shake off some demons. We wanted to see uh, Dan Campbell get to the biggest stage. Instead, they completed the entire second half and that chance away. Um, you know, maybe they're a good enough team to get, but I don't know. I don't know. That was that was probably as good a chance as you're going to get. Two squadron. You can't squander it. Look at Mike Vrabel. Took his team to the AFC Championship game three years later out of a job. Yeah, people people are comparing this to, like, the, the 2014 Colts when they went to the AFC title game and then never got back, and they're comparing it to the Titans, and they're comparing it to all these teams that went and never got back. But, like, when you look at the 2014 Colts, that team was 
they had a mid rank defense with one of the easiest schedules in the league, which is like people are like, oh, well, they were actually pretty good. They had Andrew Luck. I'm like, our defense was horrible that year. Like anytime they played a real team, they got completely shit pumped. This Lions yeah. team feels like the realest team to do that, in my opinion. Like out of all the ones they're yeah. pointing out, they feel real. They'll be back. Like that's I'm yeah. confident that they'll be back. I would put money on it that they would be back. Okay. Right. I mean, it's still heartbreaking. It's I mean, not. It's they're, not they're, not heartbreaking. I'll say that. Like it's. Yeah. I I'm I'm good friends with a Lions fan, and he's a moron. He was saying they were going to the Super Bowl at halftime. Literally saying it. I was like, dude, stop, yeah. stop saying that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like you're gonna jinx it, and then obviously they lose. <laughs> yeah. Um. And then Michael actually went with uh, Cowboys Lions Week 17. That is one that no one's going to talk about, but it absolutely was the most heartbreaking because I think maybe if they win that game, they either get the two seed or they would have they would have gotten the one seed. There was a real there was a real chance they would have gotten the one yeah. seed. I think. Yeah, and they they were definitely making a good push for the one seed, but I don't remember much because I just try to avoid it all. But yeah. Um, and then most underutilized player, I said Bijan Robinson. Michael Seff said uh, Kyle Pitts, which I mean, I think those two are interchangeable and underutilized with just talent level and just nothing, absolutely nothing. He didn't even have a thousand yards this year, Bijan, which is crazy. Um, Kyle Pitts, aver- Pitts averaged three catches and forty yards per game, and uh, you said Jamal Agnew. I, this was this was like deeper into the catalog. I, I want you to talk about that one. All right. So Jamal Agnew is kind of a gadget player for the Jags. He's uh, the, the kick return specialist, the punt return guy. They bring him in when they want to do some sort of trickery. Um, he's got a running back number, so it kind of like you're like, oh, is he a running back? And he lines up in the slot a lot. Um, he is fast as shit. And if they ever let him just like focus – on one thing, I swear to you, he'll be at least like serviceable in that role. He may never be like a thousand yards as a running back or a thousand yards as a receiver, but he could be a, a pretty solid number three or four, yeah. getting like six, seven hundred yards, something like that on a really prolific team. Um, but he fumbles in the season and then they just kind of went away from him and didn't really get a lot into that. Um, but he is, he's one of the more electric players in Jacksonville in general. And it's just, you always want to see players like that get the ball. And for that reason, uh, he's my most underutilized player. Okay. That's a, that's a great explanation. Um, in the, (laughs) no, it is, um, in the middle of the year, I said the entire Atlanta Falcons offense, which that stayed pretty true. Um, you said Lamar Jackson and I also yeah. agree with that very much. Um, and we saw it in the AFC title game where he's just sitting there. He'll sit He'll sit in the pocket for fucking 15 seconds, just holding the ball, holding the ball. You see him looking. I was watching with a Chiefs fan, and he was yelling, run, run the ball, run. <laughs> Throw yeah, the ball, run the ball. I think, I think they've almost scared him. They're almost scaring him out of running yeah. the ball, which is I understand you need to protect them. But Lamar Jackson is a physical talent that is not like those other running quarterbacks that we saw that got hurt. He has the elusiveness, and somehow he it feels like he can almost like, and I'm not doing this to glaze Lamar. I, I do not glaze Lamar normally, but he has the, it's not see into the future, but he has the awareness to predict these big hits that are coming and just like minimize the damage no matter what. And oh yeah. I understand you want more of a pocket passer, but you can't take that away from him. That is his most like valuable asset. Like his when he is running the ball and he's running it fucking good, you're scoring every single drive no matter what. Like he is yep. a physical specimen and they're learning and learning more how to stop the running quarterback. We saw with Jalen Hurts. 
um, which, I mean, he's more of a pocket-style passer, but still he runs. But yeah. um, Lamar yeah. just seems to – I mean, the fact that he won an MVP in 2019 and he won one in 2024 as a running quarterback just shows how he is different. He is completely different than any of the other ones. Yeah. I mean, you can't take his legs away from him and expect him to be – the exact same, like you can't expect him to be Peyton Manning all of a sudden. Yeah. Or, or Tom Brady just out here dishing it, uh, hitting the wide open guy on a five yard hook that literally the guy hasn't even turned around and looked for the ball yet. Mm -hmm. Lamar is not on anticipation throws, really solid over the middle. If it, the biggest problem he has, and to a greater extent, I would include Justin Fields into this. Um, they hold on to the ball far too long yeah. because they're trying to make this play possible. And sometimes it bites them in the ass because sometimes they're not realizing that the biggest play is with their feet. Mm -hmm. It's just somebody's in there clouding the brain being like, all right, instead of trusting your gut, let's do this. And it's, it's just not boding. Well, if I'm not mistaken, this were his stats lower this year than they were. Um, he won the MVP of the year his, before? Or the yeah, I'm looking at his rushing stats right now. So 19, he had 1,200 rushing yards, which I want to say, was that the record? Yeah. I say... That is the um, 2023, he had 821 in the regular season. Yeah. That's crazy to me that he was able to do – he was able to win an MVP with basically almost two different styles of running. And his career low rushing yards was 695 in 2018 – when he only started seven games. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, that first year, though, he was, whoo couldn't touch him. Yeah. Um, what about his passing yards, though? Because I know he only had, like, 3,500 passing yards and 35 touchdowns or something that in 19. 19, he had 31, but he had 36 oh, passing 31. touchdowns, which is, I mean, okay. crazy. Um and, and that just really makes me yeah. think, like, Brady Brady had 55 one year. 55. Think about Manning having 50. Manning had 50. Or was it, was it Brady had 50 and Manning had 55? Because I know one of those years yeah, with they Moss. Yeah, they tra traded the record, like, four times. Because I'm pretty sure Peyton broke Dan Marino's record, and then the next year Brady broke that record. And Peyton went to the Broncos. He, he was, like, 55. Let me see here. Okay, yeah, Brady had 50 in 2007, which was yeah. when they went 16-0. and 0. Um, Actually, yeah. Randy Moss. he had 43 in 2021, but besides those two, he, bar he rarely cracked 40. He had three yeah. years of 40 touchdowns or, or more. Manning. Ding, 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 ding. I'm making fun of you, Richard. Speedy, I know this is why I need a producer to like put put music on, you know, when when we're searching something up, like the elevator music. Oh yeah, just have somebody just have somebody playing Kenny G in the back. So Peyton had <laughs> Peyton had fifty five in twenty thirteen. He had forty nine in two thousand four. Um, there we go. But still, to think about like. How much it has changed. Like, we, I don't think, I feel like not even like Mahomes is going to throw for 50 touchdowns. Like, ever. Do that already? I don't think he did. Like, his first year as a starter did like 5,000 yards and like 50 touchdowns or something. Maybe I'm just misremembering. That's totally possible. But I don't know if he hit 50. He had a lot of passing yards that first year because his defense was, oh, no, he did. Okay, well, I'm wrong again. Jesus Christ, I'm sticking my foot in my mouth okay. all. <laughs> all day <laughs> holy shit putting mouth is these putting mouth is... hey how's it athlete's fleet taste not good really not good um he had 5,000 yards 50 touchdowns he threw for 5,200 yards in 2022 yeah Mahomes is uh he's cracking lists that's already insane. let's put it down um it's also crazy that's his first year as a starter and he immediately joins the 5,000 yard club yeah and the 50 touchdowns yeah just like all right we're here yeah I'm in this room now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that is that's Must funny nice. that you had Lamar as underutilized because that's that's kind of what I said all season. That's what I felt all season, and he 
obviously, you know, wins MVP, but not in the same way that he did five yeah. years ago. So just see these guys, like, within that time yeah. frame, how much has changed and and how many things, like, also, you know, things change, but they also stay the same. Um, and that's just five years. We can look at, you know, we can go back 20 years and look at Brady and Mahomes, you know, just the difference between that. Um yeah, I think yeah, that's that's it. We I did have you guys do offensive rookie of the year and defensive rookie of the year, but then as I was getting the article out, I was like, this is gonna be too much work for me. I I, I was like trying to get it out before I was going to bed. I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna leave him off. Um, but you had C.J. Stroud, <laughs> correct? Yeah, he. I mean, he deserves it. Like the the only one you could say is Puka because he set all those rookie wide receiver records. But it is a quarterback league. Yeah. It's what it is. Yep, second team ever, or second team in the NFL to have the offense and defensive rookies of the year in the same year. Yeah, last year was the Jets. So, Ooh. oh yeah, it was. Yeah, that's hilarious that it was the Jets because, I mean, LOL Jets, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's they should probably just change their logo from J E T S to L O L. Yeah, that's that's the other thing with the NFL rigged people. Why haven't the Jets won a title since since the 60s? They're one of the most popular in the media. The media is buzzing when the Jets win, like, seven games. Like, literally, they're like, oh, man, this is, you know, the, the, the Jets, like, next year. Don't worry, next year. Like, they did it with their defense. Imagine Aaron Rodgers there. Yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah. Uh, I kind of froze there for a second. <laughs> But uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna drop a little bit of wrestling, professional wrestling, wrestling logic into this um, rigged conversation. Uh, so here's one thing: um, professional wrestling, you can either let people know basically exactly what's happening, it's happening, yeah. and tell it at a million miles away, and you hope that people are still going to be interested when it happens. Or you can introduce the swerve. Uh, for a prime example of this. For two years now, WWE Cody Rhodes to finish the story, and he Royal Rumble, and now they introduce the swerve of, is he going to choose Roman Reigns this time for real? Going to choose Seth Rollins? They made this whole, uh, I don't know who I'm going to pick. Drew out the situation. Now the Rock involved. Um, there is not much that you can point to and be like, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah happening is a direct and complete misdirection. If the NFL was rigged, there would have teams that stay bottom feeders. What'd you, what'd you say you cut out there a little You're bit? Not gonna have, if the NFL is rigged, then there would be teams that stay bottom feeders oh, forever. Yeah. There, there would never be teams like the Lions. There would never be teams like the Texans uh, in 24 to make the impact that they made. So, um, yeah. Unless, yeah. wait, let me pull out my notes again because I got I to gotta make sure I get this one right. <laughs> this is going to be my favorite bit to do. I'm going to start doing this more. Um, unless Joe Biden has enlisted Roger Goodell and Taylor Swift to uh, get people the vaccine. <laughs> make more and more people get the vaccine. You got to get the vaccine. As Taylor yes. Swift is a psyop yeah. for white women. Since inception. Yes. Since, Since she was born. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think it's the only logical conclusion that we can That's the to. most logic. I mean, we're this is a show about logic. We do not talk about stupid things. We only make calculated decisions on this entire show. I've never put out anything stupid, dumb, including my take that the Cleveland Browns would absolutely beat the shit out of the Houston Texans in the first round five minutes before kickoff. Yeah, I saw that. I was like, hmm. <laughs> we'll see how this holds up. That was but, um, that was literally the worst thing I've ever posted. But, I mean, it was good because it was hilarious. So, and people were calling me, like, stupid and, yeah. you know, being assholes online like, like they always do. But <laughs> it's the internet, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, we are at a good stopping point, I think. Um, first off, if you're listening, make sure to go subscribe to the Curtis Podcast Network. Um, they have a thousand subscriber goal just like us. Um, and we actually have some collabs brewing right now with the Curtis Podcast Network. That will be announced oh, yeah. pretty soon, I would say. Um, but 
Make sure to like, subscribe, yeah. comment, the whatever else you're supposed to do. You all should know at this point. Um, go sign up for our email list on our website at chaoticallyintolerant.com. And we will see you on Thursday. Thank <laughs> you.